Enshrouded is an open world survival RPG that can be played solo or with up to 16 other players, in which you play as a flameborn, the last flicker of hope of a world consumed by a deadly corrupting mist called the Shroud. In this game you'll hunt down the souls of other flameborn who will become NPC crafters to help you on your journey, you'll take down bosses, hunt down shroud roots and chop them down for skill points, as well as craft epic bases using the game's voxel based building system, and of course hunt down and craft ever more powerful gear of varying rarities as you make your way through the game's diverse biomes. Enshrouded is a game that will likely be of interest to you if you enjoyed games such as V Rising, Valheim, Palworld, Frozen Flame, Windbound or Outward in the past. It's one of those games that blend survival and RPG together, where you go out, explore and have an adventure that isn't completely linear and on rails. In this video you'll get my blind first impressions of the game, followed by my pros and cons list at the end. But first, today's sponsor, Broken Ranks. Have you ever wondered what the love child of classic Baldur's Gate and Heroes of Might and Magic 3 would look like if they were made today? Luckily, you don't have to wonder anymore because Broken Ranks is just that, an MMORPG unlike any other, and you can experience it firsthand right now. This game isn't for everyone, but if you're up for something totally new and unique in this genre, then you should absolutely check it out. Become a Ternian refugee, forced to leave homeland by Utorian hordes, and alter the fate of the fight for freedom. Discover the narrative richness of Broken Ranks, where uniting a scattered nation, finding one's place in a new world, and restoring lost strength are central themes. Experience a brutal reality filled with challenges and opportunities. Explore the unique combat system praised by turn-based and action game enthusiasts, plan your movements simultaneously with only 10 seconds to execute, choose from 7 classes including my personal favourite, the Fire Mage, each with unique abilities, and experience tactical depth in solo play or appreciate class relationships in multiplayer. Join the adventure in Broken Ranks today, download now via my link in the description below and immerse yourself in a world of emotional storytelling, strategic combat and thrilling exploration. And Shrouded. This is a game that's been on my radar for quite a while, so I'm excited to see if it's any good. Create our character, a few different presets to choose from. We'll start with this one, then we'll fine tune it. Decent selection of hairstyles. We have beard options, I appreciate that. Oh, the only face customization you have is by choosing the preset. That's a bit weird. I suppose we'll go with this one then. Character creation overall is quite basic. It'd be nice to have a few more options, but it's good enough, I suppose. Let's jump into it. Three options. You can have your own private local game, you can host a game, or you can join someone else's game. Let's just make our own game. I don't really know what to expect from this game, but I hope it's similar to Valheim. And there it is. So my character is a flameborn. He's being born out of this oven, I guess. So females are not necessary in the world of Enshrouded. You can just produce people from ovens. WASD to move, you can jump. Can you dodge? You can. Control is also dodge. Can you crouch? You can. Controls feel pretty smooth and responsive so far. The graphics are looking good. The lighting's good. Movement animations are smooth. Let's go. In the top left, I've got some kind of status symbol, which says sheltered water warmth or comfortable. Interesting. Cinder Vault. What's this? You've slumbered for too long, Flameborn. The realm of Embervale has fallen, consumed by the Shroud. Now the enduring flame calls for you. So I guess it's my job to light up the world from the Shroud by building bases, maybe defeating enemies. That, that's my assumption. We leave our crypt or temple, whatever you want to call it. A bit scuffed. Right off the bat, clipping through the staircase. Why is this hot bar blurred out? Looks a bit odd as well. Well, as this is a survival game, I suppose the first thing to do is to punch a tree. Nothing is happening. Perhaps this isn't your typical survival game. What is this? Is this a torch? So we can use this to attack. I love games that start this way. Tiny bit of story just to add a little bit of context to the world. And then off you go, go explore, do what you want. I'm enshrouded apparently. Oh, there's a foe over here. Should we give him a whack with a torch? Sit. Search his loot. 
So whilst enshrouded, what does that mean? Oh, you can only go through the mist for a certain period of time. I, I see. And now I've left the mist. The time has gone away. The game looks really beautiful. Really nice aesthetic to it. And from what I can tell, it seems like there's a lot of POIs in the world to explore. It's not a vast, empty landscape. Hopefully there's going to be loads of dungeons and stuff for me to explore in this game. Oh, we're level two for some reason. Why are we level two? Loot some sticks, smash some tables. Norse-themed music kicks in. I'm just running around exploring. <laughs> hey! Fucking hell! Dude, I didn't see the rats. That's it scared the shit out of me. I think it was the sound of the rats that scared me. It's just fucking coming out of nowhere and just shrieking in my face. Holy. Man, there's so much to explore, it seems. Like, all of these POIs. The game's just started, and I'm instantly getting distracted by exploration. That's a good sign. And another enshrouded area here. If we press M, that brings up the map. How big is the map? It seems substantial. When I travel on paths, I get a little buff in my top left, which says on the road. I wonder how that affects things. What's this? That's a rat creature. Oh, he's too fast. Okay, you live for today. Location reached. So the first thing we're going to do is craft a base, I guess. Crafting V, flame altar. Right about here should do the job. So we're going to commune with the flame. So I can level up this flame altar and it expands my base's building area. For that I need a shroud core though. You can also strengthen the flame which gives other benefits. Like time spent in the shroud by offering a bunch of resources. That's cool. Yeah, let's craft an axe. And then we should craft a pickaxe. Chop the tree. Oh, the tree chopping's quite fast. Grab the logs. Now, one thing that could make this game instantly unfun is if the weight limit at inventory is like a pain in the ass. I hope it's not going to be. I really enjoy survival games where gathering isn't tedious due to weight limit. Digging this music. Definitely getting Valheim vibes early on. Although maybe it's not that kind of game. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, you can make magic weapons, a staff and a wand. Yeah, we can be a mage if we want to. I suppose we should place our campfire here. Cook in some raw lean meat. Delicious. We've burnt it. Fuck off. Okay, so you need to release when it's cooked. Eat, I suppose. Oh, that just instantly regens health. But my health bar has grown in size now. So I have no ammo to cast a spell. I guess I need runes or something. Let's craft some string. Oh, that's fast. I like the crafting. It's pretty much instant. Doesn't waste your time. Construction hammer. Workbench. Put the workbench here, I suppose. Craft and repair. Ah, so this is where I can make my base. So what does the construction hammer do? Enter building mode. Rough wood block times 100. The game's not going to make me fucking grind forever. This could be a game that actually respects your time. So it's just become night time and the atmosphere is uh, quite spooky. It's so dark. Yo, wait, did I just dig a hole in the floor? Oh, you can terraform in this game. That's awesome. Wow, look how ominous that area looks at night time. You can place stone blocks very specifically, like this. I can already tell that the building in this game is really good. There's a bloody monster roaming around at night time. Let's use my club. We are under assault. It's quite satisfying when you kill things. And they drop torn cloth. Mate, the building in this game is going to be awesome. There's like so many options when it comes to the building. Roofs. What? I suppose we'll put a door here. Wall here. Let's finish off my basic house. Oh, wow. It becomes daytime so quickly. Like, the transition from night to day is a bit jarring. It's, like, instant. I felt like that transition could be a bit smoother. Let's go to the old thatched roof. We have built our basic house. I like that you can fine-tune the building like this. That's so cool. God, I don't know why I'm getting so autistic about this, but it needs to be done. If we don't build a path, I literally can't play the fucking game. We need to make a nice path. There's nothing else more important than that right now. Every man has the right to a beautiful path that connects his house to the edge of his land. And I literally cannot play the game until this path is built. Some people may not understand the importance of a nice path. That is until you sprain your ankle on uneven terrain, and then you would have wished that you took the time to care a little bit more about landscaping. Beautiful. And now I can safely walk into my house on beautiful flat terrain, without stubbing my toe, without spraining my ankle. Safety. Although I don't like this. This is actually annoying me. That's better. That's what we needed. Now that's a fucking path. 
We're an hour in. Now I can finally play the game. So we're going to go through the shroud. Can we climb this? Oh, we can. Wait, can we climb any wall? No. Right, so we've made it across to the other side. Is this an enemy? Big damage. You can just kind of stagger enemies to death. Bushes conceal you. The game has stealth mechanics as well. Oh, it's fucking hell. Well, it doesn't against wasps. Almost dead. I'm literally on one hit because of the wasps. You cannot take much damage in this game. One or two hits and you're dead. It's like Dark Souls. Attack and dodge. No hit run. Okay, there's one. Just kite. Got them both. So far, the main thing that sticks out for me with this game is the early sense of exploration. It's really fun to just go out and explore all these areas. Awaken survivor, soul discovered. Got the soul of another survivor. Okay, so we can craft a summoning staff and that's gonna summon the survivors to my base. Ready summoning staff. Oswald the blacksmith. So we, we can place the blacksmith in our base. That's cool. Put him by the fire, keep him nice and warm. Place him here. Hello, Oswald. Now we can craft our first gear. Very nice and oh, sweet fur armor set. This is what we need. Uh, equip. That's better. Oi! Right, why are you shouting at me? Skills. Oh, I've got two skill points to spend, to be fair. So there's multiple paths to take. Survivor, Beastmaster, Ranger, Assassin, Trickster, Wizard, Healer, Battle Mage, Tank, Warrior, Barbarian, Athlete. Interesting. I guess once you... Why did I do that? That was stupid. Certain backpack items are dropped when you perish. Oh shit. Okay. Don't go up to explosive barrels and blow them up when you're standing on top of them, I guess. Who would have known? Okay, let's take all of our stuff back. Good job, Craig. When you need to rest, you can fast travel back to your home by pressing I and selecting your home. I didn't know you could fast travel. Good to know. Let's craft a grappling hook. And next we need to craft a glider. Wood and animal fur. Wait, you can just fast travel to any of these points. Oh, the vaults you can fast travel to. I see. All right, let's go chart these waypoints. Ah, nice. We can use our grapple hook. That feels good to use. Oh, you can like properly swing on it with physics. Go here and then swing over the other side. Cool. Oh, we've angered fucking wasps again. I swear wasps are like the biggest threat in the game. I'm almost dead. Heal. I can't even target them. Big damage. I'm trying to kill wasps with a fucking club. Don't fuck with the wasps. I think maybe I need to mine through here. That's so cool. So the wall was blocked and I have to like break it open with my mining pick. Mate, this game's awesome. This chest looks a little bit more grand. Apprentice wand. Ooh. More treasure. Explosive powder ball. So this explosive ball, I can throw it like a grenade. Let's give it a try. Pull some enemies. Oh, <laughs> okay, there it is. Throw another one. Just lob it. There we go. Sit down. Good fight, you tried. Another chest, anything good? Hunter's bow, we needed that. Sweet, so now we have access to ranged attacks. Let's finish exploring in here, and then I have charted this area, I guess. Let's test out the bow's hunting capabilities. Oh, that's good. You can finally just hunt rabbits easily and take their meat okay my backpack's full let's fast travel back home another skill point i'm not spending my skill points just yet because i'm not sure which path i want to take any treasure over here fireball one oh this is ammo for my staff awesome so to use the staff you need to equip spells like ammo interesting there's like a hidden thing under here let's fall down I'm sure there was an easier way down than f to fall down and almost break my bloody legs. Where was the actual path down? Oh, right here. I'm going to die to fall damage so many times in this game, I can already tell. How's my backpack full? I was saying in the beginning that this was looking like one of those games where looting and backpack space isn't going to be an issue. I take it back. So much shit to loot. I hate it when games do this, make looting a pain in the ass, make inventory space a pain in the ass. Why? It makes games worse. It's just annoying. Oh wait, what? I was walking in mud and when you leave the mud, you've got dirt all over your feet. Nice bit of attention to detail. Okay, so in this vault, we should find an alchemist. Okay, so here lies the alchemist. No, not protected by a boss or anything. Just these two little noobs. 
GG. Awakened Survivor. Balthazar the Alchemist. Enter the elixir world to find the root of evil and eradicate it. Oh yeah, this looks like the uh, the root of the evil. Oh, that's a boss. Our first boss fight. Just kill him from range. I guess this is like an intro boss fight. We ain't gonna die to the tutorial boss. Good fight. Shroud core, fell brute head, runes, and a misfortune mace. That's really strong. The shroud root is the source of the misery. Destroy it with a felling axe. There's a normal axe. That seems to work. And has that cleared the shroud? Yeah, we're no longer enshrouded. So all of these enshrouded points can maybe cleansed by killing bosses. Summon Balthazar the Alchemist. Hey, hey! How's it going? Ah, so here we can actually craft spells. Good to know. We should make a glider. Got the glider. Now we're not gonna fall to our death. Building scaffold. Oh, it's actually intended for it to be difficult to build high just from the ground. Interesting. That's kind of immersive. Eat some food, drink some water, eat a mushroom, pop a potion. Let's get out there and explore. Okay, answer here. Anything good? Ooh, a legendary melee weapon. All right, should we spend some of these skill points? Honestly, looking at this skill tree, it's incredibly confusing. Like, I don't understand why like some of these first talents give you an ability where others don't. It's completely all over the place. It's just a really ugly skill tree to look at. The UI could use some work, honestly. Because I definitely want some melee abilities. But I also want to be good with the wand. Battle mage. Blink. Replaces dodge roll with a short range teleport. Yeah, that sounds good. My house is so simple, but it looks so cozy. So now I've got a bunch of runes. Let's try upgrading a weapon. Enhance equipment, the wailing blade. Okay, 16 damage, 17 damage, 19, 20, 22. Back out into the world. Whilst we're on this tower, let's look off into the distance. Mate, you can see for so far. Over there, you've got a desert region, a snowy region. Let's just do a real long glide. The glide is super cool. Let's glide straight to the next flame shrine. Speed and efficiency. Oh, what's this? A new creature? Is that a bear? Oh, it's like a very humanoid. Cool. Finally, something new to fight. All right, let's take him on. Big damage. It feels good to take on some different creatures because I've just been fighting the same things for ages. Different things to loot as well. Okay, I have reached my destination. So here I should find a hunter. For the next eight hours or so, the gameplay loop was the following. I'd head to an ancient vault, work through some puzzles, grab loot and rescue a trapped NPC. This unlocked new furniture, crafting tables, armor or consumables, helping me to get to the next tier of gear or broadening my gameplay options with building and farming. I would then go to the enshrouded areas, fight my way to the shroud route, chop it down to clear the area and unlock skill points. Normal shroud routes would give one skill point and elixir well shroud routes would give three skill points. So definitely not something you want to ignore as doing so would leave you behind the power curve. One thing that started to confuse and frustrate me at this point was how loot works in this game. Shrouded's loot system feels really weird and very different to other survival RPGs, but not in a good way. As you progress, you're basically fighting higher level versions of the mobs that you fight at level 1, but the loot they drop doesn't seem to be any different to the level 1 version of the mob. Additionally, I found out early on that you can loot a treasure chest, go to the menu, loot the same chest and receive different loot. Sometimes legendaries, sometimes better armor than what you can craft yourself. And of course, salvaging this gear gives you an infinite supply of runes, which makes this material kind of redundant. Additionally, I was often disappointed with the loot from searching random POIs, and in the end, it felt like unless there was a quest sending me to a specific area, then it'd be pointless pointless to just go to a POI, kill all of the enemies and fully explore the village, as the loot would most likely be animal hides, bones, metal scraps, maybe a bandage, maybe some arrows. Not a whole lot to get excited about. In most RPGs, you're getting better loot at level 10 than what you're getting at level 3, but in Enshrouded it doesn't really feel that way so much. All of the exciting loot is found in gold chests, which you can just cheese by building a flame shrine near them. Them, exiting to the menu, re-entering the game and re-looting the chest for another spin of the wheel. By the end of the day I hit level 7 and unlocked the hunter, the farmer and the carpenter. I was having a decent amount of fun with the game at this point and was excited to continue progression the next day. 
Scavenger Gorger Matron. I'm getting like a health bar for a boss pop-up. There it is. Wow, we've finally got a boss fight. Holy shit, I'm almost dead. Got one tapped. Those explosive barrels, they fuck you up. Let's grab my stuff first. Big damage. Just kill it from range. Super effective. It's almost dead already. Run around it a little bit. How did I die to this thing? It's so easy. Absolute potato. Corpse explodes. And I think this is the thing that I needed to kill to get the trophy to upgrade my flame once again. The bosses I've fought so far almost don't feel like real bosses. They feel like stronger elite monsters, maybe. Like stronger normal mobs. Like, that thing went down incredibly easy. Okay, it looks like I'm traveling into a different biome now. More of a forest area. But how do we open this? Blow a hole in the wall? Yeah, that works. That's cool. I love that you can do that. <laughs> that wasn't actually the way you were supposed to do it. I think there's like a, a switch here. No, nah, we'll just throw a grenade at the wall. That works as well. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. Medium magic chest. Items stored here can be used for crafting purposes anywhere in the base. Oh my god, that's so useful. In a lot of games, it's just a feature. It's just like a convenience thing. But in this game, you need to unlock the convenience through progression. Okay. It's once again time to strengthen the flame. Got everything we need. Got the scavenger matron head. And that's flame level three. That's once again lengthened my time in the shroud. And now we need to go hunt down the fell whisper wyvern head. Level eight. Now this is a settlement. I'm expecting some good loot in here. Oi. Grenade. 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 AoE farming. This is a dangerous place. Fucking hell. Yeah, these mobs are way harder. Actually pulled the entire fucking village there. That's a mob that I've never fought before. No special loot though. Just the same as what level one mobs drop. We need to expand this house a bit. It's just too small now. The house has been expanded. I love the building in this game. It's so good. Build this around the edge of the house as well. Little half foundation. That's much better. Very cozy. Finally crafted myself a decent bed. Let's place it down. The bed of a king. How's things going here? So now I've got lots of corn seedling. So how do we do this? We just plant it here. Oh. It's as simple as that. That's how you plant crops. Oh, I like that. The house is looking good. It's looking very picturesque, almost like a cottage. I bet you can make absolutely gorgeous houses in this game if you put in the time. The game certainly gives you the tools to do so. I've actually got a lot of quests down here that I've kind of skipped out on. So let's finish up down here before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Ooh, a boss? Yo, hang on, I wasn't expecting a boss. Let me mentally prepare by killing the ad. Okay, let's take on this next boss. Ooh, yay, yay. He came in hot. Oh, he's got a lot of health. It's the first real boss fight, I guess. The only thing I'm worried about is do I have enough weapon durability? Let's throw a bomb at him. It's one of the easiest bosses of my life, I have to say. Finish him. And he's dead. We've defeated another boss. Level 10. Moving deeper into the forest. Feels like I've certainly moved into the next phase of progression. Okay, let's unlock Merciless Attack and also Power Parry. I feel like for some of these mobs, I need to be parrying them. And I've heard that the parrying in this game is really good. I haven't made use of that whatsoever yet. Yeah, it's really good. It just blocks 100% of the damage. Oh, Merciless Attack. Go. Oh, we got the Execute. It's the first time I've done that. Pretty cool. How, how deep can I dig? Can I, can I just go right through a mountain if I want to? Doesn't seem to be anything stopping me. The mining in this game is so cool. That's so cool. I've mined such a big hole in this mountain. I love games that have mining like this. Okay, I finally got my 50 bricks and now I can build a smelter. And now we can finally craft ourselves the adventurer set. We can also make a copper axe now. So I've basically like fully gone into the next tier. Also unlocked some new weapons. Chest, legs, gloves, boots, and head. How do we look? Like an adventurer. But my best sword is still the sword that I got at the very start of the game. As I've got more and more into the game, the sense of progression has really started to improve. And I'm actually having a lot of fun. 
So now we are tasked with reaching the capital, apparently. Quite a trek. Glider. There it is, level 12. More skill points. And now that I'm level 12, I can get a really good skill, Swift Blades. Just makes me attack way faster. Let's see how much faster. Oh yeah, substantially. I hope the devs add great swords to this game because I haven't seen any like big two-handed great swords that you can wield. There doesn't seem to be any talents for it either. Gormud's buried treasure. So apparently there's treasure buried here. Really? Oh, I love these buried treasure quests. They're actually super cool. Melee weapon, 32 damage. That has to be an upgrade. So I feel like now would be a pretty good time to wrap up this video because I'm absolutely addicted to the game and this is only meant to be a first impressions. We made some pretty good progress and covered a massive chunk of the map. Although, as you can see, there's still so much. I don't know if all of this area is accessible as the game is only in early access. But yeah, let's wrap up the video here with the pros and cons. Pros. Visually, I love the aesthetic of Enshrouded, and I especially like the game's use of lighting and mist to create a cosy and mysterious atmosphere. Right out of the gate, the game gives you an exciting feeling of freedom and exploration. It's not one of those games where you need to sit through an hour of cutscenes and hand-holding before you can actually play the game. The voxel-based building system is S-tier, probably the best building I've ever seen in a survival game, and I can't wait to spend time actually making a nice base off-camera. It feels like a lot of the gatherables remain relevant throughout long phases of the game, so it's often good to just gather everything. The game's talent tree seems pretty solid so far. The game allows you to play a hybrid playstyle fairly easily, mixing melee with bow, wand and staff. The sense of progression, whilst confusing at first, did improve massively and become very addicting around the 8 hour mark of playtime. I love how mining works in this game and how you can mine huge holes inside of terrain. The combat feels responsive and fast paced by survival game standards. I'd say the combat in Enshrouded actually feels better than Valheim. I think the shroud mechanic is fairly cool and I like how it's tied to progression via the flame altar upgrades. And I also think the glider in this game feels very fun to use, more so than gliding in other games. Cons. For vast amounts of the game, it just feels like you're fighting the same enemies with the same loot over and over again, with the loot not being much better from the high level enemies compared to the low level versions. Loot overall is confusing. I found a legendary sword within the first hour of the game, and I've basically kept it ever since. The same can also be said for rings. Sometimes you'll open chests in high level areas that will drop worse loot than the stuff you'll find at level 1 to 3. Early on you'll be frustrated by tedious inventory management which is later made easier from crafting more bag space and magical chests. Early on though, I was so annoyed that I was basically having to fast travel home to bank my full inventory every 5 minutes. It didn't feel fun, and to be honest, I think the base inventory size should be bigger, especially considering the amount of loot that you need to pick up in this game. Stack sizes are unnecessarily small, once again making storage management tedious. As much as it's cool to explore the settlements in the game, the predictable and mediocre loot makes it feel like a waste of time to fully explore them. Which is a shame, because typically I love games where you can go into buildings and find treasure in the rooms. But in this game, I just ended up focusing the quests when I realised that the loot from random exploration isn't rewarding. The game lacks decent boss fights on a regular basis. From what I can tell, there's only one truly epic boss in the game from what I found online. The user interface feels quite clunky to navigate and interact with, and it feels like there's a lot of copy-paste in the world. The Shroud Wells, for example, are all basically the same. Overall, I think Enshrouded in its current state is probably a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 survival RPG that has the potential to be a 9 out of 10 with further improvements and development. This game has only just came to Steam Early Access, and it took roughly 10 hours for me to start getting obsessed with it. I think the game feels a bit confusing in the beginning when it comes to progression, but once you've made sense of the game's structure, you'll likely be addicted until you see it through to the end. Would I recommend Enshrouded? Yes, if you enjoy games that blend survival and RPG together, then you'll likely enjoy this game. However, I do believe that the game will massively improve with updates over time, so if you're broke, then it might be better to just add it to your wishlist and wait for further improvements to get the most out of the game.
But that's it for this video. As always, let me know your thoughts on Enshrouded in the comments below. I'll likely keep playing this game in my spare time anyway, so let me know if you'd like to see a follow-up full review of it once I've finished the game. Social media on screen, help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods, and also to give me power to make more videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.